Texas, number three in the country, 12 and one. And Washington, number two, 13 and 0. Over under on this game, 63 points. 51% of the money bets are on Texas. Texas is favored by four points. This is the first time the Pac 12 has had a CFP team since Washington was here in the 2016 regular season. This is the first trip to the CFP for the Longhorns, and they won their first conference title since 2009. So many storylines to get into with this game, but I want to start with the quarterbacks involved. It is star-studded. You've got Michael Penix Jr., Heisman finalist, and Quinn Ewers for Texas. So, Sam, let's start with you. You cover Texas so closely. Let's talk about these quarterbacks. How do you see this matchup big picture? This game is going to be a lot of fun to me because of these two. Because you've got two guys who's supremely talented. you got Quinn Ewers, obviously, we know the talent that he has in terms of just his arm ability, uh, the, ba- the way he's able to throw it down the field. They-, they love to take shots in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. They've got a ton of offensive skill. But guess what? On the other side, Washington's got the same thing with Michael Penix, who throws probably the prettiest deep ball in the country. Uh, and he's got three of the best receivers in the country to throw to. And so to me, I would give the advantage in this matchup to Washington just because you look at how efficient and consistent I think Penix has been. Uh, Quinn is a little bit younger, and he's had some up and downs throughout his career. He, he definitely finished the season strong, but I think there's been times where you feel like Quinn can kind of zone out or or they, they just hit a, hit a little rough patch in the middle of a game. And not, not that Washington hasn't. They certainly did in the middle of the season, but Penix is a little bit older and I just feel like a little bit more consistent. And uh, I think it's going to be fun to watch though, because of, because of the offensive skill on both these teams and the ability, just the pure throwing ability, these two quarterbacks, it's going to be a ton of fun to watch these two go. Guys, I got asked this on a uh, radio show a couple weeks ago. So I want to, I'm not trying to throw us off track here, but I want to, want to quiz you here. Okay. The four teams in the college ball playoff. I would assume the four of us agree You'd rank Michael Penix one out of four? Yes. Yes. How do you sort the other three? Oof. <laughs> Milro, you know, Matt, Ewers, McCarthy. You put That's McCarthy last? We're going to get oh. to it. Yeah. All <laughs> We're right. Okay. There. Chris is, We're Chris getting is there. teeing us up on a, on a hot take here. Um, Max, by the way, I appreciate, you know, we were told by our producer, Cam, he said twice before we started the show, let's keep it to an hour. Let's follow our show sheet. He gave us all this I'd like to research. talk through the careers of all four quarterbacks for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Just everyone clear out. I'm going to go ISO here. Max, no, I, I, like, I appreciate hey, that. I will, I I will try go. to avoid subject changes. I, I do want to – I think it's an interesting question, though, because, you know, Quinn Ewers is coming off the best game of his career um, against Oklahoma State, which was not the best defense in, in the Big 12, but, but you know, certainly, um, you know, played played well in big games, played well against Oklahoma. Um he so I think that injects some confidence in him. Texas is is Sam. You could attest the games they played against Texas Tech and against Oklahoma State. That's the best they've looked all year, other than probably the game yep. down in Tuscaloosa. So they're kind of peaking at the right time. I think Quinn Ewers' confidence. You know, he's he's gets this uh, this month to to get even healthier after the injury he had this year. So I think it's kind of like a peak moment for Quinn Ewers to to play well. And you know, last year when they when Texas played Washington in the Alamo Bowl. That was the the best that Quinn Ewers looked uh, in his redshirt freshman year. Now they didn't have B. John Robinson, they didn't have Roshan Johnson, so he had to chuck it around. Um, and and they you know they let him throw it forty seven times in that game. Um, he he threw for three hundred sixty nine yards. Um, the the trouble in that game is they just couldn't sustain drives, and they only scored three points in the first half. And I think sometimes when you watch Texas, especially early in the season, and some of the games when you you know like Wyoming and some of the games where you're like this is closer than it should be. Uh, Sam kind of said it like sometimes just the kind of the flow is just a little off and, and they're kind of getting into maybe like a third and long and they're having a three and out. And it's just kind of like if, if Texas can get the right kind of pace and tempo and like, just really like get a good start in this game, I, I think it's going to be a banger no matter what. But I think that uh, um, it, it, I'm interested to see, can they kind of get the optimal performance here because they've been playing well lately. And I think it's going to take that to outduel Michael Penix. The thing with Penix, like the reason the, the reason he probably didn't win the Heisman Trophy, the reason he finished second 
is not because of the big games he played. It's because of he when he played down, it was against the worst opponents, Arizona mm-hmm. States, Stanford's, and stuff like that. Every big game they've played, he has stepped up in a huge way. Oregon twice, uh, Utah uh, on the road at Oregon State in a rainstorm played like considering the elements played pretty well. And so the, the I think coming into a game like this, a big game, we've seen Penix every time he's on the biggest stage step up. And I, I don't think this will be a game where Penix just doesn't have it because the games in which he doesn't have it is is typically the games you wouldn't think. So, but between the two, I would take Penix, but, um, you know, you, the, the Sam Max, the three of us were there in Arlington for the big 12 championship game. And yeah, mm-hmm. that was the best he'd maybe ever looked. Yeah. I I'm, I'm with you guys on, on Penix. I mean, not only does he throw a beautiful ball, it's, it's just the experience, right? Like you just have this confidence because he's been through everything and, He's been through like some really challenging situations at Indiana. Now we look back kind of on that that peak year, right? And, and what he was doing, Keelan DeBoer was doing to win at Indiana. And he goes through these season ending injuries. Like he he's just such an easy player to root for. And then he just looks so smooth when it's going well, right? Like when Chris, when you were explaining like all of these plays that he had to make, if it needed to be a third down conversion, a fourth down conversion to seal a game, like he makes it work. And it's going to be really interesting, like tangentially with the NFL draft process, when people are going to talk about his injuries, his age and the wind up to the throw. But man, I just, I really enjoy watching him and I love those receivers that he's got. The interesting thing for me, looking at Quinn Ewers coming off his best performance as a Longhorn is we haven't really seen the impact of no Jonathan Brooks really yet. Right. So, you know, what happens if a game does fall on his shoulders and he needs to go out there and win it. And it's not coming super easily. You know, how is Quinn Ewers going to respond there? There's some other areas of the, the game that I want to talk uh, this matchup that I want to talk about max. And let's start with you on this because there are some incredible skill players in this game receivers. If you like receivers, if you want to look at who is going to be all over the NFL highlights two years from now, three years from now, you're going to want to watch this game. And We've raved about the Washington receivers a lot, but Texas has dudes too. So when you look at the receiving rooms and the secondary, the guys who are going to have to cover these receivers, who do you give the edge to? Yeah, it's it's a the the playmakers in this game are going to be so fun to watch. I think the LSU duo probably is hard hard to beat if, if you're talking about like yeah. best receiver room this year. But in terms of like depth of of quality of talent, I mean, I, I think Washington and Texas are up there with anybody. Um, you know, obviously Roma Dunze, Boynikov finalist, over 1,400 yards, just one of the best in the country. Um, we, we really saw Jalen Polk step up this year, especially with, with Jalen McMillan missing a few games. He had a thousand yard year. Um, you know, I, I just think that the, the, you know, McMillan obviously is a great player and, and that's another one that give him a little time. I feel like that's going to be great for this matchup. Texas's group is just, there's just a lot of diversity to how they can, can hit you. And I think that, um, it, it's not just Xavier Worthy. It's 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 not just A.D. Mitchell. It's the ability to get it to Jordan Winnington as a third option. It's the ability to throw it to J.T. Sanders and Gunnar Helm, um, a really good tight end duo. Um, you know they're, they're able to make plays out of the backfield with Keelan Robinson. So it's going to be – it's hard to know like who you give the edge to in terms of who's the better group. Honestly, guys, the, the, t- the tough question is like which secondary is going to get a stop in this game because you know that Penix is going to take his shots. You know that, 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 that Sark does a great job of setting up his deep shots and his big plays. Um, you give both of these coaching staffs enough time to, to drop some fun stuff. I think it's going to be a crazy matchup, and I think the, the tough question, Sam, I'm curious what you think. Do you worry a little bit more about the Texas secondary in terms of this showdown, or should we be talking about the other side of that? That that maybe the Washington defense is going to have a hard time with this. Yeah, if, I think I think when I look at this one, I, I worry more about the Texas secondary just because of the way when I watch Ryan Grubb and the way they call that offense. Boy, they stretch the field vertically and horizontally, and they really do make you tackle in the open field. So that's going to mean. You you got a team that in Texas that's got two young safeties, Michael Michael Taff and Derek Williams, who by the way is going to be out for the first half because he got a targeting penalty in the Big Twelve Championship game. Uh, Jalen Cattle already hit the portal, uh, you know, so so they're they're really going to be stressed in that secondary, and that's the one part of this Texas team that I think if you were trying to pinpoint a weakness that you could take advantage of, that's the one. 
And so when you're going against Washington strength, that's the one where I'm concerned about if I'm a Texas fan. The the that said, we, and we you can all, tell Oklahoma State wanted to do that too. Like when they oh, looked at Texas, that was the one kind of yep. thing they wanted to do early is take some deep shots. They they wanted yep. to take shots. Now now on the flip side, we saw what Texas could do. Again, you're, you're talking about two great play callers in Sark and Grubb. And Sark's the, the first quarter, you know, first quarter and a half, his first 20 are going to be terrific. And he's going to do the same thing. There's going to be a ton of mixed direction. He's going to throw guys off. And there's going to be guys running across the field wide open just because that's the, what he's able to do. And with this amount of talent, yeah, it is It is going to challenge Washington as well. But I think if I were given an edge, I'd probably give a slight one to uh, to Washington because of their, their strength going up against probably Texas' weakness. The the numbers on these secondaries is interesting. Like Texas is 94th in, in passing yards per game allowed. Washington 120th. But if you go by yards per attempt, they're both top 30. Washington's 25th, Texas is 29th. So like they've just had teams throw the ball on them a lot. And so it kind of depends on what numbers you look at. But Washington's secondary has given up 30 plays of at least 30 yards uh, in, in general. So that is a defense that has been prone to giving up the big play as well. I think you're going to see both of these teams chucking deep balls like a yeah. lot. And it's going to make for a very, very fun game. And who can get the key interception here or there? They both had, I think, 16 interceptions on the year, six, sixth nationally. So like these teams, these, these secondaries take chances. They get interceptions. They also allow some big plays. And uh, the edge between the two, I I'm not sure. I, I think they're just very different setups. But I, I guess I would say Washington right now. Well, it's also Washington has different guys, right? Because of different injuries. And there wasn't a ton. We don't have, we didn't get to see them at full, full strength all the time. Um, and just how many weapons there were. I want to pose this to each of you guys. You are an NFL GM drafting a receiver. These are your <laughs> options. It has to be from this pool. Yeah. Who do you take first? This is the problem we're going to have in our in our staff fantasy draft next year. You know, well, our our fantasy draft is always fun because we just all pick our favorite college players, and regardless yeah. of what their situation is. But okay, so and it's an auction draft, so we really run it up <laughs> on each other too. That makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, okay, so so who are you taking, Max? Who are we taking NFL future? And it, let's say all, this group of receivers are all eligible right this second, and you have to take a receiver. You're a GM. Who oh, are you man. taking? I think I think Worthy might have the. Oh my gosh, I, I'm going to say a dude because he's just so smooth yeah. at everything. But the tools <laughs> yeah. that Worthy has are pretty special. Right, Dunes. I mean, oh, there are a lot of people who thought he should have won the Bolitnikov. So. Or should have been the Heisman race. Here, here's my pick. AD Mitchell. Mm. He's he's six foot four. He's really good. Big dude. I was at the TCU game where he made that falling down catch to to secure the game. He's played on this stage before. Curious what that means in a game like this. So uh that's my pick. I'm taking worthy because I love mm. speed. He's got the track speed and it's just when 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 you get him in space and he can run away from a guy, you ain't catching him. So I'd give it to Worthy, even though he's probably about like 165 pounds dripping wet. Like he's a thin, <laughs> he's a thin cad, but boy, he can he can go. He can really go. All right, let's talk about the trenches because this was something that a a lot of games are decided that way. But I just think one of the defining moments of the season was certainly Texas beating Alabama and Tuscaloosa, and it was the way that they beat Alabama in the trenches that really I think opened up a lot of people's eyes to hey, Texas could be back took Texas could be real. Like this is a team that we thought on paper could win the big 12. Well, here they are actually showing up and in, in doing this against a really quality opponent. So Sam, let's talk about the inverse of that in Washington's offensive line, their run game against Texas D line or the opposite, whichever way you want to go. But I want to talk about the trenches and how you see some of those matchups. Yeah, this is to me where Texas has the big advantage because they have one of the best defensive lines in the country, period. Uh, Tavondre Sweat, one of the best defensive players in the country, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, has been a monster, 362 pounds. Uh, he, by the way, fun fact, he weighed about 249 when he enrolled at Texas, so he has grown <laughs> quite a bit and hasn't really lost a lot of the athleticism he had when he signed there, and so that's made him such a terror. But then you take Byron Murphy, who lines up right next to him, who is 
leaner, about 308, but he is super quick and difficult to handle. And those two guys have been, I've watched teams not run the ball, like not even try to run the ball against them at times. And that to me, in some ways, I think helps Washington in that they don't have to rely on the run that they, they, I think run it less than about almost every other team in the country. I think they're fourth to last in, in the country in, in rush attempts per game, but you still have to have some run presence to win. You, you have, they have to be, you have to be able to respect the run. And I, j- I am just going to be fascinated to see how Washington attacks this and, and how they handle that because Texas has been able to, this is why Texas has been able to win this year. This is why Texas has been able to win the close games. This is why they've been able to weather the storms whenever they've hit some struggles on offense. It's because that defensive line is a terror. And oh, by the way, coming off the edge, they can get after you too with Anthony Hill and Baron Sorrell and those guys. So I, I love this Texas front. And I think this is, if Texas ends up winning this game, this, in my opinion, will be the reason. This is the matchup. This is the matchup yep. that will determine the game. This is the good because on good. Y- yep. Yeah, exactly. Because by the way, Washington just won the Joe Moore Award for the best yep. offensive line in the country. And they don't run it a lot, but they've been pretty good. That's why they were able to control the tempo and the pace and everything against Oregon. Nobody thought they'd be able to run the ball against Oregon's really good defensive front, and they did. Dylan Johnson had 152 yards and two touchdowns in that game. Uh, he had uh, over 100 yards against Utah. Like in, in those big games, Washington has been able to push you around. Again, just like Penix, it's in the other games, your, your Stanford's and your Arizona State's, where they did it. So can they again in a big game move the move the line enough for Dylan Johnson to get through? But they've also never gone up against a pair of defensive tackles like Texas has had. So like it, we just talked about the quarterbacks, the receivers, teams are going to be chucking it deep. I think this game down to uh, Washington's offensive line against Texas's defensive line. Chuck it deep. <laughs> That will be one of the lasting Talk phrases in. <laughs> I, I, I think that um, we haven't seen, we haven't really seen a lot of moments this season when when Penix was like really flustered and like he, I mean he's he's so experienced and he's able to move off his spot and and make make the play right, make the throw. Um, but this this off, oh, offensive line is really good. Uh, I'm sure people probably expected Michigan to win the Joe Moore Award because Michigan has like 10 starting offensive linemen. But um, this Washington group's really good and, and deserved it. And I think that, um, you know, it, it's – you're right to touch on Johnson. I think that was one of the best portal pickups of, of the year when he came from Mississippi State. And um, that – I think on both sides, you've got that kind of question mark of like, man, when when things are going really right, this team can run for 200 yards. And, and Texas without Brooks – they ran it um, really, really well um, in in their last uh, couple games here, but um, that that ability to kind of like, can we get what we want to get on first and second down and not get in third and longs? Um, it's going to come down to O line play, and I think uh, Texas has got a nice young group. Washington's got a really experienced group that uh, is, is going to be hard to beat. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to hit on something real quick, Nicole. You mentioned it with Penix, Penix experience, and Max just touched on it of him not again moved off. If he has time to throw we go back to the Texas secondary. It's going to be tough. It's going to be yeah. tough on Texas defense. Cause when he has time and he goes through those progressions, you combine that with his deep ball accuracy, he's money. He's and, and that, that, yeah. it, Texas is going to have to get pressure off the edge or pressure up the middle uh, and get Penix off the spot. Yep. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, you, they've just, they've, they've game planned. Well, they've called great games. Ryan Grubb has a great ability to put all of these pieces together and put everyone in really positive and advantageous positions just to underscore how good this line has been outside of the Joe Moore award, which is an incredible accomplishment because like, you know, the dudes that vote on that award are really evaluating O-line play, which is something that's really hard to do, but they've only allowed 11 sacks all season, fourth in the country and 46 tackles for loss, sixth in the country. So this is an important group. The Dylan Johnson, the explosion or the impact he's had when he comes onto the scene has been huge for them. He's over a thousand yards on the season. And it almost feels like he has been underrated because of how much we talk about those receivers and we talk about Penix. And he had like a wait. monster game against SC and SC's defense yeah. is terrible, right? So like he kind of so didn't count. Like yeah. he's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, yeah. He's, he's, didn't he have like didn't he have like almost 200 yards before contact in that game? That yeah. that was well, that, that was that, that's, that's something a little bit more about the defense. 
<laughs> USC. That, that, that yeah, that ain't exactly team. the Texas defense. Yeah. 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 By the way, talking but, to Big Twelve coaches, they've they've said to me, um, a few people that play Texas have said, um, not only is like they they think the Sweat Murphy duo is like something they they've just like not seen before. Yeah. And I think a lot of people view Murphy as like maybe Sweat's the better player and deserve the awards this year. Um, but there's a reason Murphy won defense alignment of the year in the Big 12. They, they People feel like he had just as good a season, if not better. So interested to see, can those guys be the disruptors run game and pass game that Texas really needs them to be? And, and that that is the reason Texas is here. That is the reason Sark got Texas to a level it hasn't been in a while on both sides of the ball. The moment he got there, recruiting the lines like crazy offensive lines defensive lines they were so thin and weak in the trenches they that is like we can talk about Quinn Ewers the receivers it's everything that Sark has done in the trenches is the reason Texas has gotten to this moment they are so much better there that's how they beat Alabama that's how they got into the playoff and that's going to be the matchup that determines this game so at the same time Washington survived two games against Oregon right so I mean certainly from a physical standpoint uh, I know people might knock the pack, but um, they they held up to those tests as well. I, I think that's a great point because in each of the times, and it was really those Oregon games where people wonder in Utah if if Washington was physical enough, you know, if they could if they could take punches and and throw them back, and they did. They that that's what's so impressive to me about Washington, and why I think again this game is a little bit overlooked. I'm glad we're starting with it. Because every time Washington needed a play or they're back against the wall, they they made it. They did it. And so this is going to be a heavyweight fight. I, I am really excited for it. I, I think I'd be surprised if it was a blowout in either direction just because of what we're talking about. We're talking about some of the best individual players and best units in the country squaring up against each other. 